Hey students, uh, this class is just basically, we're getting ready to get into chemicals. And the thing about a mannequin, a mannequin doesn't speak, a mannequin doesn't complain, but a mannequin's hair has already been chemically treated. And one thing about you working on clients, you've got to know the hair structure before you do it. You've got to know, you know, this hair does this, so this is what I can do to it. This hair doesn't do this, but I want it to, so what can I do to make it do what I want it to do? So the biggest thing that you've got to learn is hair structure. How does it grow? There's three ways that hair grows. Initially, the visual that we see, and you can kind of see it online, I've got a little bit of waves, but not anything to say it's wavy. It looks straight, and that's it, straight hair. That's one way. They say that straight hair grows out of a round follicle. Where that's the, the, the hair. I mean, if you look at your hair, if you look at the hair on the scalp, look at that. I mean, you know, I'm getting older, so I've got little sprigs, gray nonsense, but that's life. Anyways, the thing that it grows out of is called a follicle. Inside the follicle is what's called a hair bulb. Inside the bulb is what that hair is from. There's an opening at the bottom of the hair bulb because what feeds your hair is your blood. So your health, that's why people, when people get a little unhealthy, their hair is the first thing that's gonna show it. Other than their skin, their skin will do the same thing, but it's more the hair. So when you see someone that is not well, that's the first thing you look at. I mean, with my clients, when I know that they're not feeling well or they've had certain things happen, I can see their hair. Now some of it comes from age. Aging does that as well. The body starts breaking down and stuff. But basically it's, you know, it's, it's going to start wearing out a bit. So your blood and what you eat are going to be fed right here. And this is the basis of it. You have the hair bulb and then right next to it, right in this area, on straight hair, curly hair, all of it, you've got these items, okay? I'm not going to go into it in extreme detail. I'm giving you the basics. So we know that it's fed by blood. It's got, a, it's got a vein that goes in there, and it feeds it. So your diet is a big thing. Your, all of those things, you know, do you want your hair to be really, really healthy? Some of us, it's genetic. Some of us have tons of hair and it grows forever. Now that goes back to pigment strength. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. This is just a lecture class, by the way, because I want you to get to know hair structure before you do stuff to it. Whatever chemicals we do to it, we're going to be talking about it during class. You know, why did that happen? What was the result of that choice? So straight hair says that it grows out of a round follicle. Well, of course it does. It comes straight down. And if something comes straight down, it's going to go straight up. So there's no problem. With straight hair, uh, the, moisture fo the moisture follicle is right next to it. Right next to each hair follicle, there's a moisture follicle. That's your sweat. Okay, this is sebaceous. This is your sebaceous or sebum or your oil gland. In order for that hair to come out, it's got to be kind of lubed up a bit because hair is dry when it comes out. Unless you wet it, it's dry. It's growing out dry, so it needs some lubrication. Those are the whys on it. It's got three stages of growth. As it's being made, it's the antigen stage. That's the antigen stage. That's when it's being developed. The hair follicle is saying, okay, let's make hair. We're going to do this. Give me more blood. Give me this. Give me pigment. Give me all of this stuff. All right, so antigen stage. That's when it's being made. As it comes out into the follicle, in, above the skin, this is the skin, as it starts coming up above the skin, that's called a resting stage. So that's kind of in the middle. Your hair is going to be on your head for, I mean, uh, it, you're going to lose. You have about 1,500 hairs per square inch. Blondes have more hair than dark-haired people, but the thing is, it doesn't look like they do natural blondes now. Uh, it doesn't look like they do because their hair is a little bit finer, a little bit skinnier, in other words. They have skinnier hair, but they do have more. But normally you have about 1,000 to 1,500 hairs per square inch all over your head. So if you take square inches, you can, I mean, if you want to count every one of those little hairs, um, that's the average. Okay, that is the law of hair on the head. 
So when it comes out and is on your head for a while, up to six years, it says, you're not going to lose it all at one time unless certain things happen. But, I mean, you're not going to lose your hair all at one time. That's called the telogen stage. That's when you lose about 1,500 hairs. I mean, I'm sorry, 150 hairs a day. It's not uncommon. So when they're on your brush, you know, that some of that is normal. If it's breaking off or if it's you feel like, you know, I'm losing a whole lot more, my hair feels so thin, that comes down to health. What's going on with you? You know, or have you fried your hair? Have you taken it and had it bleached up, lightened? With, I mean, there's nothing that drives me crazier than when I see someone lighten somebody's hair using bleach with a 40 volume and then they put them under the dryer. Why don't you just put a match to it? It's, it's that's, it, there's a process to this and it depends on what's called pigment. Your pigment is the keratin protein within your hair that makes it strong or weak. The melanin is the color. That's the color. Euomelanin is for blondes. Pheomelanin is for redheads, strangely enough. So, I mean, I'm sorry, Euo is brown or, um, brown or black, and Pheo is redheads and um, blondes. So it's, it's just, it's, you know, the yellow hair, that's where you kind of, uh, keep moving. Anyways, uh, so as it goes up, when it gets to the telogen stage, as it's done resting, then it says, okay, I'm out of here, boom, gone. So don't be so concerned. The whole thing is, is taking care of your hair. So know that straight hair, straight, there's an oil gland right next to it, and there's a sebaceous gland on this side. Okay, straight hair, not a whole lot of problems. The only difference is if you see somebody with straight hair and they don't have a lot of hair, that has to do with health or that has to do whether they have skinny hair, which is fine hair, medium textured hair, which is kind of in the middle, or we call coarse hair, fat hair. In other words, more layers. When you have, let me just kind of draw this right here. I don't know whether you can see it because I got to press, let me press on the board a bit. There you go. Um, okay. This is the outside of the hair, the cuticle, the outer layer. The outer layer is clear, just like looking through a, a pane of glass. It's clear, there is no color there. The color is inside, which is the cortex. You have another area inside the hair, if you're fortunate enough to have what's called a medulla. Otherwise, you just have cuticle and cortex. Now, what happens is, let's just go with the medulla, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Those are fibers. The fibers are also in the cortex. That's why when sometimes, my board is moving, that's why sometimes when you see hair move or, or split, that's why you see the little strings. I mean, they are very fine, less than thread, but it's just fibers that your hair is made out of. The strength is going to depend on whether or not you have fine hair, coarse hair, and it medium, medium to, to coarse or medium to fine may or may not have a medulla. Medium to coarse probably does. Medium to fine may or may not. What color is that? That is a brown. The brown, true brown hair or dark blonde, light brown, dark blonde, may or may not have a medulla. That's why you see sometimes people with dark hair that can't seem to grow it. Even though their hair is dark, they have no medulla. It's fine, it's skinny hair. You may see a blonde, a pure yellow blonde, beautiful yellow blonde, beige blonde, natural color beige, has hair down to her hips. She has a medulla. That's the difference. That's what you get to know. When they have the medulla, you can do more to it. Now we've just been talking about stray hair and everything about straight hair. Hair itself, before I go into the wavy, curly, and tight curls, comes in layers. The cuticle is in layers. Like I said, that's the protective outer covering. So it's in layers, one on top of the other. The way I describe it uh, in class and to students and stuff is it's like 
fish scale, just one on top of the other. But it's also like a soda pop can. And if you take a soda pop can, the, the top to it is pretty tight, pretty sealed on there, isn't it? But once you try and open it, and you don't open it all the way, you're just trying to open it, I'll have this later. You try and get that to go down, it won't. That's the same thing that the cuticle does. When you wet it, it's allowed to open a little bit to receive that moisture or it would just come right off, okay? Hair has hydrogen in it, so it combines together. If you think of the word cones, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, and sulfur. So if you think of the word cones and how it's spelled, that's what hair has in it. That's the sulfur smell that you get when you burn hair, all right? But that's why the water's allowed to go in there. It receives it, but it's not going to go down into the cortex. It's just going to stay slightly within the cuticle. In other words, the outer layer. It's not going to open up all the way to do anything inside. It's opening up to receive that moisture, and then it comes out, and that's when the cuticle still closes and you're fine. Now, when you, when you do a chemical on it, however, it becomes like that soda pop can, unless you have other beverages that are kind of similar. Anyways, um, it comes like that soda pop can. So once you open it, it does penetrate to the cortex. You can't change hair structure if it doesn't penetrate to the cortex. If it penetrates to the cortex, it's also going to affect the medulla. The cortex is where the color is. That is your natural color. That is called keratin protein. That is pigment strain. Okay? So that's part of hair structure. So we've got an idea now what happens with straight hair. All of these, all of these are the same structure. All hair is the same structure. That doesn't change. What changes is if it's wavy. And do you see that? What ends up happening, people identify as straight hair grows out of a round follicle. Wavy hair grows out of a curved, a slightly oval follicle. Okay, we understand that. Curly, tightly curled hair grows out of what's called a closed follicle. Well, the thing that they do not explain is what's happening underneath the skin and the why. I always teach you the why about what happens with hair structure. Okay, so on wavy hair, you notice that it's bent a little bit. Is it getting blood? Yeah, it's getting blood. Blood's going in there to feed it. But see, if this is bent, and let's say you have another hair next to it. Okay, we know that, that's, that this is a sebaceous gland, oil, but let's say you have another hair next to it and this hair is growing in this direction, wavy, in this direction. I hope you can see that. And it's growing in the opposite direction. Is it squeezing the sebaceous gland? Is it pushing it a bit to where if the sebaceous gland is being obstructed by the other wavy hair, that means you're not going to get as much oil here and you may not get it out of the other one because it's, you know, wavy hair grows like this. So you've got one hair growing in this direction, another hair growing in this direction, and that's what creates the waves. When it pulls the skin, this is the hair follicle, will pull the skin to bend because it's made that way. These, uh, the, these uh, skin cells are tighter, these are looser, it's created a curve. When it creates a curve, that's when the follicle changes. It's been pulled down, so it becomes oval as opposed to round because it's being pulled. When it's being pulled, now with wavy hair, you may still be able to, your moisture gland, you'll still sweat and so on, but what's happening, people with wavy hair, why do I have dandruff? That's why. Because when you mix oil and water, what happens? When you mix oil and water, the oil goes up. Oil is protein. You're replacing yourself. When you add products with good keratin protein, now professional products are much better. They're emulsified longer. That means it's a smaller molecule. 
and it's going to penetrate and protect the hair better. So when you have a wavy hair and you have dry scalp, this is why you're not getting the oils that you need. It's always best if you're going to supplement the hair with oils, it's best not to put it on wet hair, put it on damp hair. It's more receptive. You put it on wet hair, oil goes up and what does it do? And then what are you going to do? Then you're going to just squeeze it right off of what you put it on. If you put it on damp hair and then you style your hair, it's going to penetrate. It's going to then coat that hair a little bit instead of laying on top of the water that you're going to take off. Very, very fine, fine things that we're doing with it. But there's your why. So straight hair, yeah. The straight hair you can do just about anything with. The difference on straight hair to the other types of hair is how dark it is. The darker the hair, the more resistant, the more pigment. When we talk about hair color, and I'm going to do another verbal class on hair color so that you understand what it's about and how it happens. What is it that makes color? All right. But before you do that, you have to know hair structure. You can't just go in and do stuff. I see so many people. I was at Sally's today. I had to pick up some stuff for one of my, with some of my students. And uh, I, I do supply them with a lot of stuff. It gets a little annoying, but I do supply them with stuff. And I had, because we're doing a lot of stuff online. I've got my laptop in here. And, we do a lot of stuff online right now, so uh, I had given them all my frosting caps, so I had to go pick up some frosting caps, and I'm watching this young girl in there, and she's picking up the violet bleach, and she puts it down, then she picks up the blue bleach, and she puts it down, picks up the violet bleach, and I knew she wasn't sure which one to get, so I just uh, said, uh, what results are you trying to get? And she says, well, I want to have blonde hair. And she had gold, a lot of gold in her hair. And I said, okay, if you want to have blonde hair, get the blue bleach. Blue and orange, which is gold, make white, black, or brown. What she's reaching for is getting rid of that orange because blue, I hate to use the word cancel because I teach my students, create. You're creating results. But it does. It will work against that orange to make it as close to white as possible. Now, if she would have gotten the violet, violet has what? Red in it. So then, once you lift to yellow and you've got that excess red, what have you got to get? Orange. So see, color, there's going to be so much that I want to teach you on it. I hope you're available for that class. Okay, so, wavy hair, we know that this is the why on the dandruff. Wavy hair tends to get dandruff. Strangely enough, but this is the why. Because the sebaceous gland, I mean, yeah, sebaceous gland, the sudoriferous gland, which is moisture. Uh, if you don't know how to, what moisture gland is, say sudoriferous. Your mouth gets all wet when you say sudoriferous. So anyways, that's your moisture gland. It's right next to each hair follicle. So that's why when you sweat and stuff, that's where that comes from. So when you mix it together, what happens on the skin if you're getting an equal amount of oil, an equal amount of moisture, and the body, you know, moisture that we expel is actually waste, but still. So anyways, when it comes up to the surface of the skin, it creates what's called an acid mantle. It becomes a protector of the skin, keeps it soft. Now I'll tell you what though, what's gonna keep it soft, your skin soft. I use my professional shampoo on my skin as a body wash. Because I wanted, I wanted to do for my skin, skin and hair are both the same composition. This is just moist keratin, this is dry keratin. So it's all the difference, same thing. So anyways, I like it. I, I always use my professional shampoo as a body wash as well, instead of wasting my money on the other stuff. But now you know why you get dandruff. Now, let's talk about curly hair. Somebody with curly hair. Look at how that's bent, and they say it grows from a closed cuticle. Well, if it's closed, how is the oil, and we've got every, you know, they're not all going to go in the same direction. The curls go in different directions. So you've got the other one, and again, this is really bent. So that's why that's closed, and that's why people with curly hair, even though their hair continues to grow, it tends to take a little bit longer to grow. Most people with curly hair uh, tend to have a little bit finer hair as well. 
And that has so much to do with it being squeezed out right here. Whether it's dark or light, now you can have coarse curly hair, but I'm going to tell you that's really wiry stuff. And when it's curly like this, keep in mind, again, the oil, the sebaceous gland. Now look what's happening here. It is now, you've got your sudoriferous gland, your moisture gland. It is now, that's under, that's, let me just draw this in for you right there. That gland is right there, so now it's squeezing that. So what happens with this, you might get more moisture and less oil. Or you might get more oil and less moisture on certain parts of the skin, on the head. So do you wonder why you get that crusty stuff? That's excess oil with a little bit of moisture. That's what creates the crusty stuff. The thing about very curly hair is this is bent. So very curly hair, because if you take... Oh, God, I'm trying to think of what you could even take. Let's say that, you know, you take something that's layered like that and you fold it in the opposite direction, you're going to have all those little things sticking up. So curly hair grows out, one, dry, grows out, two, already slightly damaged because it's bent. It's already bent. The cuticles, when you have something round, those little things, those little layers are going to slightly lift up. This is also what happens after a chemical. So where you have to be careful with curly hair is when you want to make it straight. You can do it, but the problem is you've already got an open cuticle that's going to probably break. So how do you take care of this? This is where you don't have the option. You have to use professional product. It's extreme that you do that. I know it costs more. I, I get that, especially when you go to a salon. Unless you're a licensed professional, you're not going to get any breaks. I mean, even at the grocery store, I see it there, and it's, you know, I go, good grief, I wouldn't pay that for that. But I don't have the problems with my hair as well. But it would be worth it if you knew what it was going to do. So with curly hair, what you need is first you've got to find out, if I have crusty spots, brushing is extreme. When you brush, you stimulate the scalp. When you stimulate the scalp, you raise the blood pressure. When you raise the blood pressure, you're feeding your hair. So, again, yeah, this has got a little vein going in there to feed it, or else it wouldn't make hair. It's, it's keratin, so it's, it, it has to make it. It still goes through the catagen, antigen, or antigen, catagen, catagen intelligence stage. It goes through the three stages. I got those two backwards. Uh, you know, just cat, catagen, Antigen, catagen, telogen, and I got these two backwards. I'm doing real good today. So anyways, uh, know that. But when, it's, when you've got really curly hair, you really do need to brush it. What ends up happening, uh, sometimes what, what I've seen happen, and I've seen it happen with young children, because yeah, your, your head is sensitive. This is where using oil on it when they're little is so important and teach them how to brush it with a bristle brush, not a comb or a pick. When you brush, you always start from the ends and go up. You don't go to the scalp and drag it out. You start from the ends, and the ends are the driest, and then you travel up to the scalp. Do it with a bristle brush first, and then you can pick it out. Is it gonna take time? Yes. Now, what ends up happening with real curly hair as well is uh, this, the skin, your hairline is the wall between your skin and your scalp. This is a different structure. This, the hair on your face up here on the forehead is called a nula hair. It's a fine, fine hair. It's a protective covering just like the, the hair on the head is more for protection and adornment. So uh, when you have really curly hair, okay, cameraman, how much time do I have? Five minutes. Okay, I have five minutes. Okay, so when you have really curly hair, brush it. Don't, don't pull it out. Use a bristle brush, start from the ends and go up. Especially with young children, I see that, and then I see them put the tight cornrow braids. Well, what ends up happening with people with really curly hair, doesn't matter what authenticity you are. There's a lot of people with tight curly hair. 
and then they end up putting braids in there. Well, what happens along the hairline, this is your weakest point. That's why we recede as we get older and so on before it becomes stronger for the back because this is a division. All right, so you get what's called traction alopecia. So that's why some people that have braided their hair when they were real little, their hair's way back here. Because of that, we've destroyed or damaged the hair cell. Brush it, pin it back. When you brush from the ends towards the scalp. So very important. Okay, and then when we get really tight curly hair, that really matted curly hair, you see it all the time. And it doesn't matter who you are. I've seen it on many people. I've been doing this, like I said, now it's 53 years. Can you believe that? Oh my God. Okay, so anyways, see that the restriction is everywhere now with all those tight curls, and that's definitely a closed cuticle. So even the oil is going to have a hard time. So this is where you've got to take care of it from the outside. So tight curls, pick it out first and then brush it, starting from the ends to the scalp. Teach your young children how to brush their hair with a brush. Let them feel it. And by the way, brushing your hair, you want it to grow 100 strokes a day. Your blood feeds your hair, draws the blood to the surface. Uh, the hair is not going to be healed from the outside. It has to be healed from the inside. Some of those products, what they do is they coat the hair. Some of those products, I mean, if it's going to penetrate the hair, it's going to penetrate the skin. So some of that is meant to do that. And that's, where, that's why the vitamins are so successful as well. So students and whoever else is watching this, I hope you understand this about hair before a chemical. The thing that is scary to me is what I see with chemical hair relaxers on very tight curly hair. The products that are used, the thing going back, get more knowledge about your hair before you do that. I see the sodium hydroxides many times taken out to the ends every time. Should only be at the scalp. Now, I'm going to tell you, sodium hydroxide, you put that on your skin. They even, have, you know, you put a petroleum on there before they put it on. So when we talk about the chemical hair relaxing in class, this is the why. The precautions need to be taken. There would be so much that wouldn't happen if people knew more about their own personal hair structure. So students, I hope this helped you. I hope it was just a lecture class, but I hope it helped you understand the different types of hair and the why on it. Open, oval, tight, closed. God bless.